It's just their alternate lifestyle. They are even gay churches. They are gay pastors. And they are gay bishops. They are gay archbishops. No gay popes yet. <laughs> you know what is very sad? You'll never ever find a gay Hindu temple. You'll never find a gay Muslim mosque. You'll never find a gay Buddhist monastery. You'll never find a gay Hindu priest. You'll never find a gay Muslim priest. You'll never find a gay Buddhist monk. But you find a gay Christian pastor. Why? Why? We claim to worship the living God, the true living God. But yet, in the name of the true living God, we are the most filthiest of the filthy kind among all the other faiths. You know, the Lord Jesus looked at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he told them, people from the east and the west will go into the kingdom of heaven and sit on the right and the left of Abraham before you do. See, the, the one from the east and the west are the Gentiles. Because the Jewish people are the chosen ones. So the Lord says, you will be left out. But those whom you claim to be the heathens, the Gentiles, they will make it into the kingdom. In the same manner, all those who profess to be Christians, who profess to be followers of Christ, but if you harbor such a double standard in your heart, those double standard people are not going to make it to heaven. You will not even enter into heaven. The scripture says very clearly in James chapter 1, that a double-minded man's prayers will not even be heard. Your prayers are not heard because you are double-minded. You are not of single-minded. When your prayers are not even heard, how can you enter into the kingdom of heaven? 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. <coughs> Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. And chapter 22 verse 15 tells us, gays, lesbians, trans transgenders will not be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled, the scripture says. Don't be fooled. Such will not be allowed in. When a nation approves such a law, it is giving itself over to the worship of demons as it was done during the days of Noah. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, you will read that during the days of Noah, the reason why God had to destroy the first race is because there was so much of demon worship. And also intermingling between human flesh and the spirit beings. Two gross things that happen. And in Psalms 106 verse 37 tells us, much human sacrifice were given to those demons during that period. Now when a nation approves such a law, what will be the result? It will open the floodgate to bestiality, which will give breath to evil spirits having sexual relations with humans, which again were done during the days of Noah. Now this kind of sexual perversion will give breath to strange flesh. Now take note of the word strange flesh. You'll read in the book of Numbers that when 
the sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, when they offered fire, incense before God, the Bible says God looked down from heaven and he saw it not as fire for incense, he saw it as a strange fire. And immediately fire came down from heaven and killed, consumed the two sons of Aaron instantly. They became ashes. Strange fire that is not of the right kind. So now you have strange flesh that is not of the ordinary kind. Now what is this strange flesh? The strange flesh is the crossbreed between a human and a spirit being, which was practiced during the times of Noah in Genesis chapter 6, verse 2 and verse 4. Now there is a strange prophecy in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 43, which says that something like this will once more take place in the last days. It says like this, in part, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another. They will mingle with the seed of men. Once again, this will happen in the last days. You know, you may have heard of many, I don't know whether you have heard it in Australia, but I've heard it in India, I've heard it in Africa, where people claim to have sex with spirits. Have you heard anything like this in your country? You have. So this is a common thing. Now what is a one-off thing here and there will become a common thing. That is why this same-sex marriage, a thing that was unheard of or a thing that was kept hidden in the closet for ages of time has now come out in the open. Not only it's out in the open, it is now a very fashionable thing to be called a gay. A politician is no more shy or embarrassed to call himself a gay. Many Hollywood actors and actresses identify themselves as gays and many American sportsmen are very proud to say they are gays. So now it is becoming a fashion statement to say, to call oneself a gay or a lesbian. And even now they have a miss world title for transgenders. Even a transgender is accepted to participate in the Miss Universe contest. So now everything goes. A very, very acceptable alternate lifestyle. You know, in some nations in Europe, there is a law that says a parent has no right to register the sex of a child at birth. They cannot say it's a male or female, leave it blank. Why leave it blank? To give the child a choice to choose the sex of his own like. And I read in the papers in the Daily Telegraph in Sydney yesterday that another law, such a law like this has been tabled in your country where a child who is 11 years old no more needs the court's permission to change his sex from a male to female or a female to male. To take hormone injections to change his sex. 11 year old. You know, when I read that article, I was wondering in my mind, what was I doing when I was 11 year old? I never even knew what was sex was all about. 11 years old, I was playing kite with my friends. Do you fly kites? I was flying kites. I was playing marbles. Do you? Do you? Oh, we are the same. Look at that. I was playing soccer. Do you? That's what, that was all that I did. 
the most was my friends or the boys teased each teased each other with girlfriends that's all you never held, hold a girl's hand you never kiss any girl 11 year old but today look at that today 11 year old forget about 11 year old a 5 year old knows what is a gay knows what's a lesbian knows what's a transgender and knows that he can change his sex and now they have toilets with a male sign female sign and an x sign x sign is for transgenders or for anyone you know i have really seen a sign like that he's half male and half female do you have that here not yet don't say no not yet you have it's half male half female which means a male and a female can share that toilet where are we heading to you know the scriptures tells us in Jude verse 7 that going after strange flesh that means a human having sexual relationship with evil spirits was practiced even in Sodom and Gomorrah and it gives birth to something a strange flesh now we have scriptures to prove in Genesis chapter 6 that when the sons of God now these sons of God are not the children of Seth as it is explained by some theologians there is another breed in heaven called the sons of God who are the highest of all the creation of God after them comes the angels and the sons of God they look like us humans and they have the power to procreate that is the reason why when they mated with the daughters of men they could pass their seed to the woman and the woman gave birth to not ordinary babies they were giants why they were giants so let's say for example a person of my height five and a half marrying a woman who is five and a half if we have a children our children are not going to be six feet or seven feet tall right it will either be five or five and a half at the most five point six <laughs> but not more than that my father and my mother are a little shorter than me I am the tallest in my family <laughs> okay I'm not the only one my younger brother is also a little taller except for the two of us our parents are just a little shorter not too short see you take on the genes of your parents and if there is a, a, a man who's six feet tall and his wife is five feet tall his children can be six and a half but not more than that but here you read that an average height of a woman meeting with a son of God the offspring was a giant a giant who was 12 feet or 13 feet tall how do you how do you know did I measure that the height of Goliath is given in the Bible he's 13 feet tall so certainly son of God is not sons of Seth because sons of Seth were ordinary but these were giants and not only giants they were renowned men they were great men with great wisdom because these sons of God are with great wisdom and intelligence of from heaven so they can pro recreate only the sons of God has that ability not the angels because the Lord Jesus himself said the angels they are not male or female what did he mean by that 
I understand by the scripture because seeing an angel, when you look at an angel, they look, their face looks feminine, but their bodies look masculine. So they are not, they are not male or female. They don't have anatomical parts like we do. But the sons of God, they are just like us. So, these evil ones, when they intermingle with a human, a new breed, a race of a strange flesh will come forth in these last days. They will populate all over the world to carry out the diabolical plans of the Antichrist. So, what should we do? The church must rise up combatant to war in the heavenlies against this work of the enemy. So this is what you should do. The church must rise up combatant, not just simply pray. Lord, I pray for Sydney, make them all good. <laughs> Those kinds of prayers were good 50 years ago, but not in these last days. You must take up arms. That doesn't mean you go and buy an AK-47. <laughs> AK-47 will do you no good. Or none of these machine guns will do you good. You must learn to bend your knees. Fast and pray. And combat in the heavenlies. Work together with the angels in heaven. Get your strategies from heaven how to combat against the spirits, against the spiritual wickedness in the high places, against the principalities, against the powers, against the ruling spirits that are controlling Sydney. There are spirits that are controlling Sydney. There are spirits that are controlling your nation that is driving the nation toward yes. If you combat in the heavenlies, a flood of angels will be released in this nation and they will move the hearts and the minds of the people toward a no. Now what is the work of the enemy? To cause you to lose the great revival that has been promised to come to this nation. That is the work of the enemy. To make you so sinful that God in his justice will not give you the promised revival. You know, it has been pro prophesied by the great man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, that in these last days, Australia will experience a mighty revival that history has never seen before. And from you, revival will sweep to the rest of the world. This was the prophecy prophesied by that great man of God. Now the plan of Satan is to disqualify you from experiencing that revival. To cause you discredit so that According to the justice of God, he cannot grant you that revival. This is the plan of the devil. So when the Lord revealed all this to me, I was much broken. And I began to bend my knees and pray. And I appeared before the presence of the Lord. And I asked the Lord two questions. Lord, what can be done now? What should we do? Is there anything that we can do or what should we do to avert all this or to mitigate? Not just mitigate, you want to change this whole thing around. Do you? Yes. So on your behalf, I asked the Lord this question. And when I asked the Lord this question, I saw the same Elijah come and stand there and he was very furious. He looked at me and he said these following things. 
their churches are sleeping they are self centered and they don't care even those who are holding the lampstands in their hands they don't care they don't bend their knees spread their hands and cry to god for their nation as we had done you know when he said as we had done i saw together with him the saints moses the saints Il- jeremiah they all come and stand there now all these saints were great intercessors who stood before god on behalf of their nation the prophet moses stood before israel and he told the lord if you want to kill them first you kill me right moses did that and elijah was a man who also stood before god and he turned a nation back from following idols to following the living god and then you have jeremiah called the weeping prophet in jeremiah chapter 9 he says oh let my head be like fountains and my uh, my head like waters and my eyes like fountains that i may weep for the perishing daughters of jerusalem so he says they don't care they don't pray for the nations as we have done they are not like the elders in jerusalem who sigh mourn and cry for the sins of the land in ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 you'll read about the elders in jerusalem who sighed and mourned and wept for the sins of jerusalem you know i was shaken with fear when i heard elijah speak so furiously about these things let me repeat them one more time their churches are sleeping they are self centered they don't care even those who are holding the lampstands that i believe refers to ministers of god who have high status high rank or positions of authority they don't care even such people don't care they don't bend their knees they don't spread their hands they don't cry to god for their nation they are not like the elders in jerusalem who sigh who mourn who cry for the sins of the land if this goes on like that soon the flood will come to run over them now shaken by all this i ask what should we do then it is true that we are like this it is true that we don't care it is it is true that we don't have the burden it is true so what should we do is there anything that can be done to turn this whole thing around so that grace can triumph over a mercy triumph over judgment so when i said this out of a broken heart i saw abraham stand beside them and he said this ask them to gather as many churches and leaders as they can to fast and mourn for three days to call for a national fast for their nation when they do that then the spirit of grace will be poured upon the nation if not then god will turn the nation over to judgment now what will he turn the nation over to now please turn your bibles with me to romans chapter 1 and let's read eight very important scriptures here romans chapter 1 
verses 24 to 32. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burn in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also a proof of those who practice them. You may not be a gay, but if you word a yes, you are approving that. And you are as guilty as a gay practitioner. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, God is, God has shown you a way of escape. You know, I'm sure you cannot get all the churches to do this. But gather as many churches and church leaders as you can. Not only in this city, but all over your country for a national day of fasting and prayer. We have a couple who have come all the way from the Philippines and they will wow chef to whatever I'm going to share with you right now. That about five years ago, they were in a similar crisis like this. Today, the Philippines economy is one of the fastest growing economy in Asia. And the Philippines currency, the peso, is the second strongest currency next to Singapore in Asia. And so many wonderful developments have happened in their nation in the last three years, never before in the history of the Philippines. So what happened in the last three years that turned the tide around? One thing, the church repented. You know, about several hundred pastors and bishops, they gathered together for a national three days of fastings and prayer in an open stadium. And they repented to one another, all their infightings, all their pride, all their envies. You know how you fight against one another. Today we take our war into the social media. You write about each other on the Facebook, on the Twitter, and you remain anonymous. Nobody knows you. So they did all that and they repented. And at the end of the three days, they washed each other's feet. The pastors and the bishops washing each other's feet and they had communion and they asked for forgiveness. They were reconciled. They prayed for the sins of the nation. After this event, when the church house was put in order, the Lord put the nation in order. 
the nation was turned from the brink of bankruptcy to now a prosperous nation in Asia. And they have great natural resources in the country which are being discovered by their geologists every day. Even in every person's backyard, there is a gold, there are gold, there are many minerals and every other person can become a millionaire today. Now all this was a result of repentance. Now God is calling you. Unlike other nations, you have a destiny. You have a destiny to bring the torch light of revival to other nations. So you don't want to blow away the flame from your torch. So the church come together, bend your knees, you fast and pray and cry out to God in true repentance and in humility like what the people in Nineveh did. And surely that which the enemy thinks for evil will not come upon your nation. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up for a word of prayer. Holy Father, I have communicated to your children all the things that you showed me and all the words you spoke to me. Now I pray, Spirit of the Living God, to stir the hearts and the minds of your dear children. Can we all kneel down please? There are many, many pastors, ministers of God in our midst. Not only from Sydney, but also from other different cities of Australia. The Lord is calling you to gather as many churches, leaders as you can, to come together for a national three days of fasting and prayer. What will you do? Heaven sees you. The churches are sleeping. The churches don't care. Do you have that attitude inside you? Do you have a don't care attitude? Are you sleeping to all the sins that are taking place in your country? Are you deaf, blind and dumb to all the sins that are taking place in this great nation? Maybe you are like this up to this point of time. But now, from this moment onwards, what are you going to do? Don't say in your heart, who am I? I'm just a nobody. David was a nobody. He was a 15 year old nobody, but God used him to kill Goliath. He was a nobody, but he had the zeal of God in him. He not only killed Goliath, but he became the king of Israel. Not only he became the king of Israel, but because of his 
humble heart his heart that was full of love for the living god his kingdom was established for ever and ever and even the lord jesus is called today the son of david so don't think that you are small you are a nobody we we are just a small church don't say like that are you a man are you a woman who tremble at the word of god are you a person who fears the living god are you willing to take hold of the horns of god are you willing to bend your knees spread your hands and cry out to the living god i see right now the face of the lord jesus looking down from the heavenlies i just see his face like a gigantic face looking down and the scripture that comes to my mind is i'm looking for a man who will stand in the gap who will take hold of my hand and prevent me from bringing judgment are you that man are you that woman are you that person now you determine before the living god now if you are willing i see right now a precious saint standing in our midst he is very very glorious to look upon and he tells me that some people here will receive a tremendous powerful anointing a calling for intercession that is similar to the anointing that rest upon jeremiah that rested upon the prophet moses who loved not his life even unto death but stood in the gap for his nation pray much for your children for there is a plan by the enemy to steal their callings and the anointings that god has kept in reserve from the beginnings of time pray for your newborns that they will be undefiled from chemical injections strange medicines from been put into their bodies that their genes will not be altered pray for them that a pure breed will be preserved unadulterated untainted pray for your youths that they will rise up as a strong and mighty army i see right now the devil has 
kept an army of male and females to infiltrate the godly male and female to entice them into sexual vices to sexual promiscuity so that his godly ones will lose their callings and lose their anointings thereby disqualifying themselves from being the last days mighty ones that's been prophesied in Joel chapter 2 pray for your churches that it will not become a den of thieves and a heaven for harlots and becoming an altar for Babylon pray for the good pleasures of God to be fulfilled in your nation for the mercies of God to be made manifest in this nation for the grace of God to be multiplied many times over in this nation Holy Father look upon each and every one of your dear sons and daughters now look at them Lord humbly bending their knees and crying out to you with tears look at their broken hearts look at them Lord sighing mourning and groaning Lord your word says you look for one man but here there are more than one man look upon them Lord look upon them cause your great goodness to manifest in this nation that it will be turned towards righteousness that the plans of the enemies will be destroyed we pray confusions into the minds of the enemy <coughs> we release in the name of the Lord Jesus confusions into the minds of the lawmakers who are for the same sex marriage bill in the name of the Lord Jesus we your people agree in oneness and release confusions release confusions release confusions into the minds of all the leaders the prime minister the ministers the justices every lawmaker that their hearts will be turned towards God towards righteousness towards holiness 